Next, we will see a demonstration of a method called Community Language Learning, or CLL. Based upon the more general counseling learning approach to adult education developed by Charles Curran, CLL calls upon teachers to become skillful understanders of their learners as whole persons. Becoming a skillful understander means recognizing and accepting the struggle students face as they attempt to internalize another language. Watch how whole person learning is put into practice in the CLL demonstration lesson by my colleague, Bonnie Minnell. What we're going to be beginning today, and we're going to work for two days, on our homes, our houses, apartments, wherever it is that we live. And I'm going to be asking you to think about your home. Now, you probably want to think about the home in your country, unless you really feel that you've been in this country long enough that you really have a home here. In that case, you can think about your home here. But otherwise, when I ask you to think of your home, try to sort of let your mind go back to your country, to your town, countryside, wherever it is you live, and see your own house. And then we're going to work on some of the vocabulary that you need to describe your home. And so we'll be working on pronunciation and intonation in describing our homes today. So as I said, we're going to begin with you thinking about your home. So use your mind's eye and kind of go back and see your house or apartment, whatever it is you live in. Some of you can close your eyes if you want to, if it makes it a little bit easier, right, instead of being here in the classroom. But just see that place where you live and see what's around it, what's outside, Feel the temperatures, the smells, everything that goes with your house. Walk inside and go through all the different rooms that you have in your home. And as you're walking through those rooms, you probably see a lot of objects and things that give you certain feelings and emotions. And maybe even people, the people who live in the house. Okay. Now, with that sort of picture in your mind, I'd like you to turn to the person who's sitting next to you and describe your home. And you really want them to have the same picture in their mind that you have in yours. Okay? So just turn to the person who's next to you and describe your home to them. Okay? So we've got two here, two, 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 two. Okay. Okay, we have to have a three right here. Okay? Okay, would you join this group here? Rosie? Rosie? Okay, she's going to join you as a threesome. Okay? Thank you. And then we have a... We didn't have a milk tea. But the things that we have are very nice. I, I live with uh, friends from other countries and we share all our experience and... How many rooms? How many in your apartment? Three bedrooms. Three bedrooms. And one room uh, big and a kitchen. All of them are push or are big? Or? Yes, we're uh, big. And what's very nice because all the things were, were, were sharing and the work was shared. So. What's about you? Okay, uh, I'm living in Conakry City, switch. Make sure you switch. Africa. So the other I like my apartment there. because uh, we, we are living in uh, African family, uh -huh. you know. Um, Okay, you need to come back to the classroom. <laughs> I know some of you are very far away. <laughs> right, okay, what I'd like you to do is take just a moment now, and on the piece of paper you have, think about some of the words, some of the special words you need in order to really describe your home. So it might be words for particular rooms that are very important to you, or a feeling, a word that describes a feeling or a thought or the, how it looks. And just try to list some of the words that you would need to use in describing your house. You've probably been using them already. But try to capture the very special words. So just make a list for yourself on your paper. Just try to write as many as you can. Just keep writing. 
Just words. Mm -hmm. Okay, that's probably got you thinking. I'm sure you could keep adding to that list. What I'd like us to do now is you've been thinking individually and you've been writing your words down. On the board, we're going to make a collection of some of your words with everybody contributing words that you would like to work on. Remember I said we were going to work on pronunciation and then being able to take some of these words and use them in sentences, right? So if you'll call out your word, I'll write it on the board and we'll keep going until we can fill up the board with words, okay? So anybody who would like to give me one of their words? Clean. Fence. Clean. Clean. Okay. Next one? Fence. Fence. Pacific oh. place. Pacific place. Okay, as in or the ocean? No, no. Peaceful place. Yes, Warm. peaceful. Warm. Okay. Okay, so peaceful. Comfortable. Warm, I heard. Location. 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 No location. Located. 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 Okay, you want location or just located? Located. Located. Okay. Share. Alrighty. But let's take a look at the ones that we have up here on the board right now. And I want you to just take a moment and yourself read through all of the words that are on the board, and see if there are any on there that you're not sure of the meaning. First, just read silently. Then if there are any questions, we'll look at the meaning. So everyone just read. Clean. And just... Let's start, and I'll just run my hand down, and if there are any words that you want to make sure you understand the meaning of. Okay? Second word. Okay. Fence. Can fence. someone describe a fence for us? Fence is a... To place. Okay, a fence divides one thing from another. Okay, sometimes we have a fence between two houses. Okay, we have a fence around the garden to keep the animals out. Is it always outside? Is a fence always outside? Yes. 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 How many people have a fence around their house? What is it made out of? Wood. Wood. Wire. Iron, iron sometimes. A fence out of trees, Bush. we call that a, a hedge. Okay. So a fence that's really bushes or trees is called a hedge. Okay. All right. Okay. Other? Cozy. 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 Yeah. What does Cozy. that mean? Comfortable. Nice. Comfortable. Nice. Nice. Warm. Nice. Yeah. Okay, warm. comfortable, warm. warm. And usually nice. small. Right? Okay, and usually small. Mm. Okay. Sometimes in my house, the kitchen is the cozy room. Mm -hmm. It's warm, it's small, very relaxed. Mm -hmm. What's the most cozy room in your houses? Bedroom. 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 <laughs> is it a small room? Is it a small room? Yes. It's warm, okay. Because it's very important, usually with the word cozy, that it has this sense of very small, very intimate, okay, where you're very relaxed. Small and comfortable, yes, mm -hmm. both. Okay, so it's a very special word for that. Okay, as I said, we're going to work with these now for pronunciation. All right? And we're going to do that in a way that's a little bit different, perhaps, than some of the ways that you've worked with pronunciation. You're going to be the ones who are saying the words, and I'm going to be the one who's repeating the words. You're in control, okay? And the first way we're going to do that is we're going to do it chorally, meaning you can all say the words. And we'll start with the first word, and we'll go down. 
the list. You say the word is the group, and then I will say the word. Then you say the next word, and I will say the word. Okay? okay. All right, so I'm repeating after you. Okay. okay? <laughs> and I'm going to go behind you. So you're looking up here. You're only listening to me. Okay? okay. So let me get back there first. Okay, we want to read the first word? Clean. 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 No, we don't. Fence. 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 Peaceful. 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 Warm. 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 Comfortable. Comfortable. Cozy. 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 Quiet. Okay, let's do the flowers first. Flowers. 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 Quiet. Large. 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 Huge. 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 Big. 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 Okay, let's go to big first. Big. 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 Now you can do it individually. And if you would like to work on the pronunciation of one of the words up there, just raise your hand, then say the word, and I'll repeat the word. If you want to say it again, you can say the word again, and I'll repeat the word again. If you want to say it again, I'll say the word again. I'm like a computer. I'm going to keep saying the word the way I normally would say it. If you want to keep practicing with the computer, you can. If you want to stop the computer, you have to stop. Okay, because I'm repeating after you. All right? Okay. So just raise your hand and then begin, and we'll work with quite a number of people. Okay? All right? Here? Comfortable. 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 That's okay. Cozy. 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 Sure. Okay. okay. Warm. 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 What I'd like you to do now is write a sentence. Okay? Write a sentence about your home. Try to use some of these words that we've been working on, or perhaps you have another word on your paper that was very important to you, but write a sentence that in some way describes or tells us something about your home. And then we're going to work with your sentences just like we worked with the words. Okay, so you get a chance to say the sentence. It can be short, it can be long, up to you. It's your choice. Okay, so one sentence. One sentence. As I said, I'm going to be the computer in the same way, except this time I'm going to stay up here. And when you read your sentence, I'm going to repeat your sentence. But you might notice there might be some differences between your sentence and my sentence. If you want to repeat your sentence the way I said it or the way you said it, you can again, and then I'll repeat. We'll go back and forth if you want. Okay? All right. So again, if you want to read your sentence, raise your hand. Okay. okay, right up here, please. My apartment has two huge bedrooms, one living room, and uh, one cozy kitchen. Okay, mm, that's a long one for me. Okay. My apartment has two huge bedrooms, one, a kitchen, one living room. a living room, and one cozy kitchen. And one cozy kitchen. Okay, let me see if I can get that all together. My apartment has two huge bedrooms, a cozy kitchen, Oh. One living room. A living room. And one cozy kitchen. And a cozy kitchen. Okay, my apartment has two huge bedrooms, a living room, and a cozy kitchen. We share a small yard with neighbors. We share a small yard with neighbors. I'd like to take the last few minutes just to ask you how you felt about the lesson. I wanted to tell you one more thing, though. For tomorrow, what I'll be doing is I'm going to collect your words and the sentences that you wrote. And we'll come in and we'll work with the rest of those words and the rest of the sentences. So we might not have gotten to your sentence, but we're going to use that as our material for class tomorrow. Right? So make sure you give those to me before you leave today. Right? And then just as I said, the last couple of minutes, I wanted to ask you how you felt about the work that we did today in class. 
and this is a very um, interesting method for learning English. Mm -hmm. I, I am very comfortable. Mm -hmm. What made you comfortable? Excuse me? What made you feel comfortable? Feel comfortable. Uh, uh, You're not sure, but you no, just it's felt but comfortable. <laughs> <It's very laughs> I felt also comfortable because reason is uh, I could know the purpose, but now I'm studying. Mm -hmm. So it was easy for me. So knowing, understanding what we were doing, what the yes. purpose was, helped you to relax and to study yes. in the lesson. And the class was very, very, very practical, I think. Mm -hmm. Very practical. Mm -hmm. So useful yeah. Yeah, very things useful. that you're studying. Yeah. Yes, I think that it's very good because people can express the feelings and at the same time it's interesting because you can think in many things. and. For the vocabulary, you can learn a lot because maybe I know some word, but other people know other, and we can share. Mm -hmm. And in this way, it's, it's, it's very, very nice. Increase the vocabulary, mm -hmm. and I agree about the other, the other opinion about the relaxed time. Mm -hmm. You you don't feel fresh, fresh, mm -hmm. you feel okay. You can talk and express. And, so and sometimes people can express, and for me, mm -hmm. it's, to me, it's important. Mm -hmm. There's been two things that really struck you. One, a lot of the words were new, but they came from your fellow students. Exactly. And also not feeling pressure mm -hmm. allowed you to feel relaxed and to learn. Mm -hmm. I have a question. Mm -hmm. um, today we studied the vocabulary, but I want to know where are we going to study grammar and mm -hmm. how, how you do. Mm -hmm. So your concern is where's the grammar? Right? <laughs> grammar maybe makes you feel secure. And when it's not there, you're not so, oh, so secure. it's very important. Uh -huh. okay. <laughs> so that's a very important thing for you to feel secure about your learning in the class, the grammar. I learn grammar, and at the same time, I talk, I'm, I share with my roommate. I'm, the method is very active, and I feel very comfortable, very sure. So you feel kind of comfortable feeling that you are working on your grammar when you're yeah. speaking with your roommate speaking, about Speaking, yeah, listening at the same time. Mm -hmm. So it was comfortable mm -hmm. for you. Yeah. Again, this last comment here. Uh, I appreciate this kind of discussion because it shows uh, the African way of teaching and I think uh, with this way we learn quickly because we have practice in you felt that this methodology was very American, yes. uh -huh, that we use today because in class. Yes, because we practice, uh -huh. and if we practice, we keep everything in your mind. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So, so that goes along with learning the language, too. Yeah. Right. Well, thank you very much. There is time if you have things that you'd like to talk to me about after class, after we break, because some of you need to go now, so thank you. You may have noticed that the teacher began the lesson by telling students what they were going to be doing for the class. The teacher does this, recognizing that any new learning experience can be threatening. When students have an idea of what will happen in each class, they often feel more secure. People learn best when they feel secure. What came next in the lesson was the teachers inviting the students to first visualize and then to describe their homes. Each student was given a time limit and towards the end of the activity was reminded that they had only one minute left. Setting and enforcing time limits also enhances student security. Afterwards, they listed the words they needed for the descriptions. Kern believed that students should be given an opportunity to assert themselves, to be actively involved, and to invest themselves in the learning experience. One of the ways of allowing for this is for the students to have the responsibility for generating the language they list, wish to learn or to work on. The students next inquired about the meaning and practiced the pronunciation of the words they had listed. You may recall that the teacher stood behind the students as she read the words after them. This is done in the belief that the superior knowledge and power of the teacher can be threatening. If the teacher does not remain in front of the classroom, the threat is reduced and the students can focus their full attention on the words in front of them. When the students practice the words individually, they chose which words they wished to have the teacher repeat, an exercise termed the human computer. The students control the computer. They can turn the computer off any time. The students learn to discriminate, to 
and listen carefully to see if what they are saying matches what the teacher is saying. The students were next asked to use the new words to make their own sentences. As the teacher repeated each student's sentence, she corrected it, never overtly, but rather by repeating the sentence correctly in a non-threatening manner. The last part of the lesson was devoted to a feedback session in which the students reflected on what they had experienced and felt during the lesson. The teacher listened and showed each student she understood what each one was feeling. In this way, students have an opportunity to feel accepted as whole persons, to learn about their own learning, in addition to learning about the language.